And why would I be sad? Because I'm a cute little sea bunny that you're trying to get rid of. Duh. I don't know anything about this game. The only thing that I really know about this game is that it's a sequel to another game called Milk Inside of a Bag of Milk Inside of a Bag of Milk. And I decided to quickly look at that Steam listing real quick to see if I could get any idea about that game first. But the description of that game was just like, oh, help female character get milk from the shop. Don't disappoint her. Which tells me nothing about what to expect. Okay, just to clarify, I'm starting with this game instead of the first game because the first game is not available for Mac. It's very rude of it. I hope the audio is okay. You guys let me know. Uh, that was a strong start, I will say that much for sure. Hmm. Walking to my room trying not to look around, that's nice. Sounds good? Perfect. Playful shadows dance around me here and there. They dash all over the walls, the ceiling. One of those shadows whizzes past me, touching my face ever so slightly. I smile and continue walking, paying it no mind. That's nice. <laughs> Sounds like my house, oh dear. Sometimes it's so easy to lose self-control and track of time, spinning in a joyful dance. But I'm in a bit of a hurry here. Mom told me to go to bed. I got a creepy uncle that does that all the time. That's definitely not nice. Um, <laughs> are you okay, cat man? <laughs> Just kidding, he's in jail. <laughs> I... Good? <laughs> I walk past the kitchen on the way to my room. The door is shut, but I can still feel the chilling air coming from the other side. My first thought is that there's a living corpse blowing into the keyhole, laughing mockingly. Unrelated charges? Hmm... <laughs> That's so silly. I'm absolutely sure we have no corpses in our kitchen. I know for sure that we've never had any corpses in our kitchen. I'm absolutely sure that... 
<laughs> I break into a run and dash toward the closed door. The shadows intensify their chaotic dance. Are they trying to stop me or calm me down? I don't know. It doesn't matter right now. Don't you get it? I wave my hands around as I run, trying to chase away my annoying pursuers, but then I suddenly realize that I won't be able to stop in time. I've got no other choice but to break the door now. Poor door. If there's somebody inside, I'll surely scare them to death. But wait, how can I scare to death someone who's already dead? What if it actually revives them? No, no, no. I don't want that. What do I do? I don't... I don't think that's how zombies work. I couldn't fully complete my thought when my shoulder hit the door and it flew open. That's nice. I mean, it could be though. You don't know. I mean, I, sure, I guess zombies could work that way. But that would be strange. <laughs> As I expected, there was no living corpse inside. But there was a bag of milk I bought today, sitting right in the middle of the table, watching me with its unblinking eyes. I stare back. Nothing happens. Dun dun dun, bag of milk. Although, what exactly did I expect? Gratitude? Have I done something that warranted it? A bag of milk probably doesn't care whether it's on the shelf in a store or on a table in my mom's kitchen. <laughs> Why did she buy a bag of milk with eyes? <laughs> First mistake there. Yeah, rookie mistake. Buying a bag of milk with eyes? How could you? On the other hand, nobody would drink milk inside the store, which means I took it from the safest place in the world and into the scary unknown. I'm so sorry, you poor thing. Quite Creepy, indeed. <laughs> googly eyes. <laughs> well, I mean, if it has googly eyes, how could you resist? You have to buy it then. I turn away in shame and leave the room in a hurry. I only bring others trouble. And I want to go put googly eyes on milk in the store. <laughs> Do it. I dare you. <laughs> I walk toward my room through a narrow corridor. Did I read that right? <laughs> I meet a familiar, formless creature at the door. It locks me in its clutches and starts sniffing every inch of my body like a hungry dog. That's pleasant. I'm not struggling. I know it's useless. I just stay silent and endure its tight grip that stops me from moving. Now, Spooky, that is a great point. California does not sell bags of milk. But he didn't say he was going to put googly eyes on a bag of milk. He just said he's going to put googly eyes on milk in the store. Yeah, put it on a garden milk. Put it on the plastic gallons. Put it on all the milk. After stiffing me from head to toe, the creature holds out its ugly paws, barring a single claw. Thin and sharp like a blade. I'll put the googly eyes on everything. Yeah, do it. Again. I mean, I guess this is a sequel, so maybe this did happen in the previous one. Who knows? Not us. I stare questioningly into the monster's bottomless eye sockets. Don't move. I mean... I don't have controls to move yet, so I guess that's not going to be an issue. The creature squeezes my hands until my veins start bulging, and I just keep staring into the black cavities where its eyes should be, 
ignoring all pain. I've promised so many times. Stay put. Oh. The moment it says that, its claw pierces my arm. I don't feel anything other than the barely discernible crawling under my skin and the ring of tightly sprung. I don't know that word. Sinews? I don't know that word. Hmm. But then, then the claw injects its venom into me. Well, that doesn't sound like a very nice IV. It hurts. A white veil appears in front of my eyes. My fingers cramp and start twitching frantically. I lose control over my body and slowly slide to the floor, just like last time. But... Why... Why do I feel so hot? That'd be the confidence, unless you mean temperature. Sinew is pronounced as it's spelt. Sinew. Okay, but what does it mean? I feel my blood boiling up. Strong shivers run through my body, paralyzing every single cell while my veins and arteries heat up, almost bursting from that pressure. I try screaming, but instead of producing words, I vomit thick, milky foam. I can word so well. The creature notices it and throws itself at me in anger, grabbing me by the throat while keeping the poisonous claw inside my arm. A piece of tough fibrous tissue uniting muscle to bone or bone to bone. A tendon or ligament. Interesting. Kill me, kill me. Clust it. Hysterical screams resound through the corridor. In a fit of madness, the creature starts scratching my neck. Kinky. Bright splashes fly everywhere, hitting the walls with a loud sound. I tried to imprint where every drop fell in my memory so I could gather them all later. I need to remember. I need... Oh, so this is that kind of game. Apparently. Better close my door and get the lotion. <laughs> A new wave of pain washes over me. Everything turns pitch black in an instant. <laughs> that is not what I was agreeing with. <laughs> <laughs> sure, spooky. Sure. <laughs> Say it. I'll never drink milk ever again. I already don't drink milk. So I guess this life lesson isn't for me. This life lesson is for whichever of you are those nasty milk drinkers. Looking at you, spooky. I... Say it. I'll never drink milk ever again. Say it again! You better be repeating after this, Spooky. This is an intervention. I'll never drink milk ever again. I'll never drink milk ever again! What a strange incantation. I finally get to my room. I'm so tired of all this fuss. Thankfully, I still feel comfy and warm in my room. Even the weird sounds coming from the outside don't make me anxious at all. That's nice. Mom told me to go to bed, so I need to perform all the needed preparations. I've washed my face, and now I'm standing in front of the mirror with a toothbrush in my mouth. I look at my reflection. It shows absolutely no desire to sleep. Yeah, I get how you feel. I don't know, your reflection looks pretty damn tired in my opinion, but that's okay. And there was a time when the last minutes before I sleep were my favorite time of the day. 
I loved anticipating the inevitable moment when the reality and the dream world would clash. I woke up for that moment's sake, lived through the day for it. My biggest dream was to sleep all day long. It would have been so cool, but the dreams always slowly but surely slipped away. Tragedy. As if somebody fished them out of my head, one after another, one after another, until nothing was left, and now I have to sleep again, even though I don't feel any need for it. That's a lot of pill bottles. After finishing with my face, I usually reach out for my pills. It's funny, but I have no idea how they work separately, since I always swallow them as a bunch without thinking. Eh. Now I want to have a better look at it, to twirl it in between my fingers, to chew on it. I'd do anything to stall for just a little bit more time. Its smooth, protruded red capsule is looking at me. It's covered in a murky, semi-transparent film, but I can still discern its contents. So, what do we have inside you? Probably, medicine. But, maybe, on some weird off chance, it has milk inside. I gently press on the capsule from both sides, and to my surprise, it turns out to be soft and squishy. I press harder and the capsule pops. Sticky, bright, let, blah, 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 blah. Bright, red liquid pours out. Filthy, filthy. The pill flies straight to the waste bin and I start rigorously washing my hands. No, there's no way I'm drinking that. Well, that's why I was in the capsule. You're not supposed to drink it. Next was a flat pill of the same blood red color. There were some letters printed out on it. Oh, I get it. This is the medicine that makes me really sleepy. But it's not the type of sleep I want. That's not it at all. It's fake. No, no, no. I don't even want to look at it. What's like medicine is bright red? The pill flies into the waste bin as well. The next half an hour goes by in a similar fashion. I study every pill from all sides and then I find a reason not to swallow it. I invent my own medicine instead and enjoy swallowing them one after another, letting myself drown in their healing effects. How did you invent your own medicine? Interesting. Hey, my neck doesn't hurt anymore. Hey. My hand doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my head doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my heart doesn't hurt anymore. Ah, uh, I see. The problem was, you weren't taking painkillers. You were taking pain starters. Rookie mistake. Yep, another body part that doesn't hurt anymore. My stomach. Hey, my eyes don't hurt anymore. How come I didn't think of this earlier? This is so simple. I need to brag about it to someone right away. But not to my mom. She'll just scold me. A mood. And she's sure I'm already sleeping anyway. I don't want to disturb her without reason. I'll think of something myself. Besides, I just really want some small talk. I wonder, who's going to be my conversation partner? Got a little freaked out because seems like, oh, you have a new item in your inventory. It's like, okay. Thanks, <laughs> Steam. Hey. Oh, I get to click that. Innovative gameplay. Hey, long time no see. This is the first we've met, actually, but, you know. It hasn't even been an hour, dummy. <laughs> you know we're only supposed to meet once per day, right? In my limited experience, one events medicine by eating M&Ms and Skittles after dropping their antipsychotics 
cold turkey. <laughs> Oddly specific, <laughs> but okay. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. Should be soon that I and call them a baka, or should we scold them because we're apparently only supposed to meet once a day? Big questions, big questions. Let's go with they're only supposed to meet once per day. Why does your voice sound so grim? I can't help it. <laughs> Proceeds to laugh. Um, naturally, I've read the manual. Judging by the pictures, the overdose side effects are the usual headaches, dizziness, exhaustion. Basically, nothing I can't handle by myself. After all, now I know how to do it. That's nice. He didn't reply. Aren't you even a little bit happy? Not even the slightest bit? I mean, I don't know what our relationship to each other is. I don't even know your name. Um... Well, that's rude to just say, No, I'm not happy. Fuck you. <laughs> I'm pretty exhausted after today. Well, I guess you are too. That's not true. I like our little smug grin. You need to go to bed, though. No, you've been in control for way too long already. It's my turn now, alright? I'll just stay silent until the medicine's effects wear off. How about that? Hey, you can't do that. You need to do your best to make me feel better. I still don't know your name. That's exactly what I'm doing. What a bully. Hmm. Actually, why am I even worried about this? A great question. In reality, I don't need you. At all. I mean, I don't doubt it. Hmm. I'm so energetic and I feel great, which means I can do anything. And you, you can only watch and agonize over your uselessness. Well, that's nice of you to say. <laughs> I can imagine how angry you are right now. Sure, angry is the word. Yeah, I'm all beside myself. I believe this is a DID simulator. <laughs> what made you so happy all of a sudden? And why would I be sad? Because I'm a cute little sea bunny that you're trying to get rid of. Duh. Remember yourself a couple of hours ago? I don't know what you mean. Okay, mood, but like... Wow. So many options. Such variety. Which one shall I ever pick? Hmm. Middle one's looking pretty sexy. Number three? Aw. You chatted a little too late. <laughs> nuh uh. I still don't understand. I mean, I also don't understand, but that's okay. Whatever. Unlike you, I won't forget that pathetic, snotty girl for a long time. She just whines and whines all the time. Don't even try ruining my mood. I want to have fun while we're together, alright? So you're the one calling the shots now? Yeah. Well, let's see how long you can last. We'll see. Yeah. I... Am I really that pathetic? I don't know. I still don't even know your name, sweetie. Say something. Something. I can feel tears streaming down my cheeks, hanging from my chin, and then falling on my clothes, burning holes in them. You might want to look into that. I don't think it's normal to have such acidic tears. That was fast, but not unexpected. Hey, at least I tried. Go wash your face, then we'll decide what to do with you. I'm in front of a mirror again. I keep staring at my reflection, trying not to get distracted by this 
sneery looks the walls are giving me, trying not to drown in their giggling. But then, me in the mirror also shows me a creepy smile, bears her teeth at me. I shut my eyes, but that doesn't help. It wouldn't have helped even if I sunk through the floor. A mood. I start counting in my mind. Two squared, two by two squared, a square squared, a square pyramid squared, a pyramidal structure cubed, a pyramidal structure hypercubed. I feel better. But my head is splitting apart now. How do you feel? You're mocking me, right? And no. Still don't know your name, though. I'm obligated to ask you this at least a couple times per session. A session, huh? You don't like that word? I'm fine. You definitely don't look fine, sweetie. No, you're not. <laughs> I... Don't know why, but I thought I'd be able to take control. I was almost ready to. I was sure I'd be able to change something. After all, I was able to buy milk, you know? Priorities. Yeah, you ought to know how challenging it was. Milk? Milk indeed, brain dead. Milk indeed. More pills. Again. <laughs> Is that why you threw away the medicine? What a stupid decision, right? Whatever it was, it was your decision. It's very important, apparently. Yes, the milk is oh so important. Does it even matter? Hmm... What do you think? I can't be sure about anything, and you don't take me seriously anyway. Then why did he do that? I felt like I'd be able to fight it on my own. It's true, the pain subsided for a bit at that time, but now I feel it triple in force. It hurts so bad. You know what to do, just drink your medicine already or I'll stop talking to you. Oof. This one's nicer. Dejected, I reach out for the shelf with my medicine. I swallowed the pills one after another, chasing away the unpleasant visions that keep floating up in my memory. And yet, my mind still draws a terrifying picture. Lumps of coagulated blood and transparent coating traveled down my esophagus, scratching its soft walls, leaving behind furrows. I shake my head violently. I don't care if it makes me feel dizzy or worsens my pain. I just don't want to think about something so repulsive. You still haven't changed. What do you mean? You're afraid of being alone. This worries you much more than pain. Yeah, I guess. I toss the last pill into the air and catch it with my mouth. I somehow feel like I said mouth wrong. <laughs> I lie on the floor, I look at the ceiling. I can clearly hear water running in the metal pipes up there. I hear the cracking of concrete blocks that will someday surely fall on my head. That's nice. But I'm not afraid of that at all. I can't imagine my death coming from above. Rather, it's rearing its claws from somewhere below, waiting for me to lose focus. You want to talk about it? No, I've had enough of talking. I mean, same but no, I'm crying with being... I can't words. I'm distracted by chat. What do you want then? I just want to lie down for a bit. 
a mood. Even if the ceiling is bound to collapse, it won't be today. Can you stay silent, please? No! I am currently hosting a very important Twitch stream. I need to get my thoughts in order. Well, you should have thought about that first before being in a video game. I carefully extract thoughts that are yet to be fully formed from my head and lay them out on the ceiling in orderly rows. Now it's my cork board. In hopes of seeing the whole picture, I switch them from one place to another, pile them on top of each other, scatter them around, and the end I throw them off with my hand, annoyed, and start over. I can't do it. You can always imagine your thoughts as something small and swarming, like cockroaches. That's pleasant. Ew, I hate cockroaches. Can I make them fireflies? Ooh, fireflies would be nice. I don't mind either way. Cute. I don't even have the time to blink before my thoughts. They're fireflies now start whirling all over the ceiling of their own accord, forming whimsical patterns. Spooky? Shoosh. I can only observe them and wait for the right moment. <laughs> Are you guys gonna have a singing session in the chat? I swear to god. It's just... That moment doesn't come. The mocking sounds of flapping wings coming from the ceiling make me start to lose my patience. <laughs> if I remembered any other lyrics, sure. Or is it a million? <laughs> you guys are so coordinated, oh my god. <laughs> I thought it was 10 million. 10,000. <laughs> One of the quantities are correct. I can tell you that much. Probably. <laughs> if 10,000 fireflies. <laughs> Enough. I hate you. Good night. Yeah, that sounds right. That sounds better. <laughs> you guys are so coordinated. I spring to my feet and scream at the top of my lungs. The fireflies scatter. Good job. Now start over. No way. Unstable behavior makes you look bad. I don't give a damn. So that doesn't bother you? Should it? Maybe. I'll make a new song called Lightning Bucks. <laughs> Um, no. A lot of people act like this. Really? There's nothing shameful about snapping at someone if you have a reason for that. You did have a reason, didn't you? Well, they're paying an unbelievable amount of them. <laughs> You'll surely get better. Believe me. And now, start over. You're at it again. What do you mean? Never mind. And I've changed my mind anyway. Please don't stay silent for this long anymore. <laughs> I have to rhyme bug with like rug. <laughs> Good luck with that, cat man. I'm having a hard time without your help. Fine. I raise my eyes to look at the ceiling once more. Sadly, all my fireflies seem to be hiding somewhere. 
I need to find them. Forget about them and go to bed. No, you don't get it. If I'm thinking about something, I need to finish my thoughts, or else. I glance around the room. There are too many places for a creature as small as a firefly to hide here. They can be anywhere. Suddenly, I hear a deafening rumble. The clock just hit midnight. It's so late already, but I can't go to bed right now. Will you help me? Please, tell me you'll help me. Come on, stop bullying me. You promised to talk to me. What were you thinking while lying on the floor? What do you mean? You should know it better than anyone else. <laughs> That's the thing. I have no idea. This is weird. Will you tell me? I... <laughs> That's nice. This is very pleasant. Oh, we're ending on this image for more text. That's nice. I roll my sleeves and start rubbing my eyes intensely. They're so itchy. <laughs> um, hmm. Number one? Or number two? What do you think, chat? I'll actually wait for one of you to choose this time. As the dog loses his shit in the background. Hopefully that's not being picked up. Number two, haha, <laughs> poop. Catman says one. Okay. Spooky, it's up to you to break the tie because I can't trust you guys with freaking decisions and not tying. I swear to God. Just go number two. He said it first. Time to digitally flip the coin. No, Alan, you're going to take too long. Just going number two. Bye-bye. Oh boy, distorted audio. Haha, <laughs> go poop. Wow. My eyes are itchy. Did he bring milk? <laughs> you only now got it, Catman. <laughs> I'll pick number one for this one. I wonder, if I tear out all my eyelashes one after another, will my eyes stop itching? I don't believe that's how that works at all, sweetie. <laughs> I wonder if I tear out all my eyelashes one after another, all my eyelashes one after another, if I tear out all my eyelashes one after another. I wonder if these those choices matter at all. Who knows with these types of games? It could matter, it could not matter. Eh. Yeah, what have you done, sweetie? I need to gather the glass and then... Then I need to have a bath and then... Here. Drink some milk. Hmm. <laughs> that was nice. I stand in the middle of the room, my mouth agape, gasping for air. I think I just experienced death. I don't know any other way to explain what happened. <laughs> they need some milk. Mm. Well, that was surely something. 100% surely was something. Will you tell me or not? About what? Let's look for the fireflies instead. You're acting weird. Help me instead of running your mouth. I've already had enough adventures before bed. I need to gather my thoughts quickly and go to bed. My thoughts are hiding from me. <laughs> to be honest, I have no idea where to look for them. Me neither. I guess we'll have to tear the whole place apart. No, 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 and no! If I make even the smallest of messes here, I'll feel really bad. All the things should stay in their places and that's it. Why? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Are you trying to come up with a reason right now? Who? Me? No, of course not. Things that I would say. I think you forgot to put up your mind block. I can see through you. Rude. Alright then, so we need to find a bunch of tiny insects inside a mountain of junk without moving anything even an inch. Yeah. My oh my. I have an idea. Last time becoming a visual novel character helped me achieve my goal. <laughs> now I want to become a point and click adventure game character. Ah. Uh. So that type of gameplay. Got it. You know, those games have moments when you just look at different objects and something inevitably happens. It sounds so fun. Oh no, it's meta. <laughs> and what about the things you use regularly? Do you refuse to touch them as well? It would make it even more interesting. This is so childish. I want to know what's the best part. You'll be the one doing it. <laughs> oh no. Oh yes. I start panicking as soon as I get in a multiple choice situation. Hmm. I'll just keep changing my mind and end up crying and running away. Do you want that to happen? Not really. You're such a handful. Hmm. You've already proven that you're able to make decisions, why not continue on that road? Come on, don't be so boring. Well, that's rude. I was just teasing you. You don't have to bear the whole burden. Asking for help is a reasonable decision, too. Let's begin already. I go to the middle of the room and look around. Where would I hide if I were a tiny firefly? Ah, this is so thrilling. My heart gets warmer from the pleasant anticipation. Hey. What? Look down. I look down. After a moment, a small ball of light and warmth crawls out from under my sweater. Wowie. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Where would a firefly hide? Up your butt. Uh. <laughs> The smoke coming from your clothes are just wowie. Hmm. Hmm. I'm tempted to pick wowie because I do say that kind of a lot. But there's smoke coming from your clothes. That's kind of probably should be addressed. Yeah, there's smoke coming from your clothes, sweetie. <laughs> Whatever. That's nice. Zooey mama, shut up. <laughs> I carefully grab the firefly. It's pleasantly scorching to the touch. I put it on my shoulder. I'm sorry, little guy. Time to come home now. As if it was in order, the firefly slowly drifts up and circles around my head for a bit and then flies into my ear with the speed of a bullet. That sounds painful. <laughs> Apparently it tickles, though. One down. Let's look for the others. Yeah. Is this actually going to be a point and click? Yes, it is. Okay. Fireflies don't produce heat, so like... So like what? Man, there's so many things we can click on. Wow. Don't like that. Did not like that. Is this an I Spy reference? It's literally a point and click, my dude. Why is that moving? I don't like... No. Okay, uh, let's start with this. Don't like that either. Okay.
just click everything in due time, in due time, Catman. That's what I usually do. And what are those? Ah, those. The joke is that I Spy has made some of the world's most popular point and clicks. I'm not surprised, I guess, but I definitely more so know of it for the, you know, books. But those are the photos of my best memories. <laughs> but they're blank. <laughs> I stare at them so intensely that I burn them with my eyes. <laughs> That's sane. Now they're just covering the cracks in the walls. Cracks? Forget it. Are we continuing the search or what? I mean, if I were a firefly, I'd probably hide in some cracks in the wall. Okay, we are though. Carrying on. What's this? I look up toward a very high place under my sailing. I can hear a countless number of small legs marching inside the AC unit. Ah, are the fireflies there then? Oh well. What happened? Fireflies can't be friends with cockroaches. We better look somewhere else. Why would cockroaches be there? Have you forgotten? You were the one who told me to think of my thoughts as cockroaches. You vetoed that idea and went for fireflies. Yes, but... They became fireflies afterwards, but... Cockroaches don't disappear just like that. I mean, I guess, but don't you want the cockroach thoughts too? So they occupied this place. Do you understand now? I guess. I'll pretend I do. That's what I would actually say. <laughs> mm. It's not easy to get out of here. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, anything out here that I can... I'm tempted to click Aries to see if they'll do anything, even if they don't highlight, but um, no. <laughs> What's funny about that? I imagine myself being a firefly that is looking straight at a giant fan. And... I'd be so jealous. The only thing preventing it from flying is the cage it's locked in. And the cable. That's like an inmate, if you think about it. It's so sad. Uh, yeah, I guess. Let's continue searching. Plants. Right, insects enjoy pollinating the flowers and stuff like that. I mean, it depends on the insect. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess guess. There are several other reasons fans can't fly. With that attitude, sure. I get close to the flower shelf. I sniff around. The leaves smell of dust and cardboard. And death. You know, these, those plants are long dead, right? I'm not sure a dead plant will be able to attract any insects. Well, we kind of don't have a choice here, you know. Still. You're right. Let's keep searching. Or continue searching. Eh, same difference. Why don't you just throw them out? Weren't you listening to me at all? I mean, I was listening, but I only have so many dialogue choices. Time's gosh. I look at the alarm clock. Time continues its unstoppable flow. It's so late. Are you tired? You bet I am. I let out a theatrical yawn and hold out my arms to the sides. One, two. Then I raise them above my head. 
three, four. Maybe a little workout will help me freshen up. Good idea. Do you remember the exercises you've been taught? I think so. I take a hesitant stance. What was it? Heels together, toes apart? Whatever. I'll go with that. Count down five minutes. Fine. You have a clock right in front of you, though. I can't look at its hands for too long. At first I feel like they start moving in the wrong direction and then they disappear altogether. And then things always get messy. Last time I saw a pair of eyes on the clock face. And also, I used to hear voices back in the day. They pleaded for help, I think. What a mess. Truly a mess. It was a mess, right? A mess. Well, are you counting down? My god, finally. What do you mean? I was trying to get through to you for half an hour. Huh? Forget it. Do you see the firefly? N no Let's continue searching then. A pair of eyes on a clock face, you say? Indeed, that is what was said. It's only suitable, I guess. This is my sketchbook. Half of its pages are blank, which means it'll still be good for a couple of years. <laughs> you draw that rarely? Why? Isn't that obvious? If I run out of pages, I'll have to buy a new sketchbook. Okay, that is a mood, but like... I can't get to the stationery store on foot. I'll have to take the bus. Do you even realize what kind of nightmare that can turn into? Uh... <laughs> they just like me for real. Well, maybe you can ask your mom to buy one? That sounds like a bad thing to... say. I get closer to the sketchbook, stepping over the wires, the sleeping bag, the cracks in the laminate, and the window's reflection. The sketchbook is lying on the stool. From my height, it seems like the stool is missing two legs. I squat and look again. All the legs are in place. Will I be able to think of an interesting allegory? Uh, let's not go there, okay? I stand up and study the sketchbook from inches away. Its pages are pure white. The last drawing is buried, buried on the previous page, the way it should be. Too bad, I'd love to see it. Maybe next time. A sudden gust of chilly wind breaks into the room and makes the pages rustle. Oh no. I shut my eyes. A distinctive sound of pages turning echoes with headache in my head. I know what's going to happen. The rustling has stopped, even though the wind is still howling from every direction. It can only mean one thing. The notebook is open on the first page. Mouse, please, do not lose connection. Thank you. Gosh. Death time, I think. I don't want to die yet. Ah! If I wait a little longer, the wind will close it. I won't have to look if I wait a little longer. If I wait... Open your eyes. No. It's okay. Just do it. No way. I know you're lying. Calm down. No. Calm down. No. Calm down. No. Calm down. No. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Fine. I open my eyes with utmost caution. The notebook is still open in the middle. No drawings. Nothing. The pages are still pure white. Did I imagine it? I don't know. Did you? You're the smart one here. You tell me. Next time, don't close your eyes. What did you... 
I couldn't finish speaking because the pages started moving again. Don't close your eyes. Don't make me do it, I'm scared. Trust me. The rustling grows louder. The pages lift up. I can almost see the outlines of drawings on previous pages. No way. Everything that is in the past should stay in the past. You couldn't convince me. That's it. I'm closing my eyes. Look. Look there. A barely visible light seeps through the pages. With every new gust, it becomes brighter and brighter. A firefly! The wind immediately stops. For a moment, the world sinks into perfect silence. But only for a moment. The buzz that has always been haunting me fills the surroundings. But it doesn't matter now. Goodness gracious, little boy, you made me so scared. The firefly blinks, flies up in, and enters my ear, buzzing loudly all the way. It spends some time looking for the perfect spot in my head, but then its buzzing dies down. Phew. Are you okay? We're running short on time, so let's continue searching. <laughs> this is my sleeping bag. It's soft and warm. I'm sure that no living creature would be able to resist the temptation to spend a minute or two inside. They'd want to dig deep into it with a couple of favorite items, close their eyes, and then... Hey, did you fall asleep? Huh? I gently slap my cheeks to return myself to senses. It's already way past midnight. Usually I'd be sleeping like a log at this time, but right now, I can't. Let's continue searching. Hey, maybe we'll find something inside? Nah, my thoughts don't have a feature of putting to sleep. Quite the contrary, they always cause insomnia, just like tonight. Okay. The umbrella emanates. Blah 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 blah. blah. <laughs> The umbrella emanates a faint sense of coolness. No wonder, it's the only thing that defends me against the thunderclouds that gather under my ceiling. It's such a blessing that I can do it without my help. Still, a firefly won't hide in a place like that. It'll catch a cold and be unable to fly. You don't want to check it? Why? I'm sure we won't find anything there. I guess it's bad luck to open an umbrella inside anyway. I look at my laptop. I haven't touched it for years, so it's covered with a layer of dust as thick as my finger. Ah. A bizarre item. I fear it. Why? It's a long and boring story. Wonderful. Tell me about it. Hmm. I insist. I don't remember how it appeared in my room. One of my parents probably brought it here because they couldn't find a better place for it. They didn't prohibit me from using it. On the other hand, they encouraged me to do so. Sure, I've spent my whole days in front of the screen. Games, drawing, engineering calculator, 3D modeling. So much fun stuff to do. You had amusing hobbies. Yeah, I did. Before entering the web. Hmm. Imagine this. You're a hamster that lives underground. You have everything for comfortable living. Did you imagine? As always, your analogies are spot on. Okay, I imagined. Alright. So you're a hamster that lives underground. You have everything for comfortable living, okay? Okay. Wonderful. And here's the situation. You're a hamster that lives- Okay, I got it. Do you want to tell me about something else? Allegory of the cave moment? <laughs> yeah. I'll end up returning to that subject anyway. On one wonderful day, someone digs you up from your hamster house and brings you to the pet store. Now, your new home is a cage. 
It's way more comfortable and warm compared to the underground. And the most important part, you have a lot of neighbors here. Their cages are identical to yours, and the other hamsters look identical to you, too. That means you're all the same. Apart from the fact they were born at that shop. You'll ask, what does that indicate? And I'll tell you, nothing at all. I forgot what I was talking about. Gosh. Okay, let's start over. This time, try to avoid stupid hamster analogies. You know, I'm not at fault here. So. I had a lot of friends online. Tens, hundreds of them. Impossible to count. Is it impossible though? I had exactly 317 of them. Although, I guess nobody counts the exact number of hamsters when they walk into a pet shop. Hey, don't get distracted. Oh, right. From my 317 friends, 68 of them were into gaming, just like me. 130 of them like drawing, just like me. The remaining 119 were into calculators and 3D modeling equally. And when I say equally, I don't mean 59 and a half friends on each side. Alright. You can split numbers evenly, no problem, but math doesn't work like that when it comes to friends. A major conundrum, right? Get to the point. I knew, of course, that no real people exist on the web. I also understood that all my friends die the moment I turn off my laptop. But I still wasn't even a bit worried. Why? Do you even know what computer programs consist of? They're just a combination of numbers. Which means my friends are also numbers. Isn't that amusing? Not really. Why do you call them your friends? I mean, everyone who shares my interests is my friend, and I don't care whether they know about my existence or not. Anyways, as I was saying, every program has its own algorithm and purpose. It's mathematical formula. And if you solve that formula, you'll be able to predict the program's behavior at any moment. The longer you speak, the less I follow. You don't need to follow me around, just listen. I sit on the floor and the laptop screen ends up right in front of me. The only thing reflected in it is my dim face. A web person is just a random picture and a random string of letters. Words and actions from the web person are just ex- blah blah blah, blah. <laughs> Are just executable code. Hey, let me know if you need a break. One day, someone appeared. From that point on, my laptop was always on. There are no real people on the web, but he was good at pretending, at some point, and let him trick me. Hey, look! Huh? Suddenly, a firefly slowly crawls out of the laptop's vet grill. I reach for it. It gets on top of my palm, blinking all the while. I think it's trying to say something. I could see that myself, if only I knew what. Looks like a cipher. Don't you want to crack it? I changed my mind. I have absolutely no desire to find out what it wants to say. The firefly stops glowing for a moment after that. Then it starts glowing again, as if coming back to its senses. For some time it thinks about the further course of actions then flies up and dashes into my ear. Let's continue searching. And what about your story? You must be mad at me for interrupting you. I'm sorry. If you do everything right, I'll finish my story. Maybe. Do you promise? I promise. I mean, that means there's a chance of fucking up. I don't like that. And if you forget, then remind me, with a code word, for example. What code word? I'll think of one later. It's probably gonna be milk. And for now, let's keep searching for my fireflies. Um, man, there's so much, there's so much stuff to click.
I doubt it. All the compartments are locked. What if? I don't even want to think about what's inside. You know, as well, I end up imagining. That's fair. Um. Did I already click the backpack? Oh, it seems like everything that I've already clicked before stops being highlightable. So that's actually useful. Good to know. Um. So that means I still haven't picked the backpack yet. I look down. My school bag, worn down and silly, is almost screaming of its own uselessness. From another angle, it looks like a full belly. Its contents are also regurgitating, decomposing, and turning into a sticky, mushy substance. What a cool image. I need to remember this. Totally not cool, senseless and cruel. You are there, but I don't care. Is it me you're laughing at? What? I never. After all, you're not my pet. <laughs> you laugh at your pet? That's a little rude. I'm not going along with this nonsense anymore. Got it. Got it. Hey, it wasn't on purpose this time. Tell me what's inside your bag instead. Nothing special. Mostly just all sorts of books. I've taken out all the pens and notebooks out of there, and I'm not interested in anything else. Okay, mood. You used to go to school, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I had a blast all the way. Are you sure you understood my question? Do you think everything in my life should be doom and gloom? Well, you're wrong. Alright, alright. What do you like the most there? Hmm. Well, the rooms were really bright, not like at home. That's it? <laughs> Don't rush me, let me remember. Well, the beds were also soft, and the food was nice. By the way, I attended all the classes. The others always skipped. They probably got told off so hard. I smiled gently, absorbed in warm memories. You never graduated, though. Yeah. Do you remember your last day there? It was a normal day. Dad picked me up earlier than usual. He told me that I'm already too old for the school curriculum. I also realized that some time ago, the tasks were way too easy. Then we got into the car and went home. Mom greeted us there. We had dinner and went to our rooms. And what happened then? I don't remember. And does it even matter? Tell me about it again. Is your memory that bad? <laughs> okay. You're just a character in a game. You have no right to call me out like that. Please. Oh, fine. That day, Dad picked me up from school earlier, explaining to me that I need to grow up. It's not like I could completely grasp what he meant. Either way, I didn't resist. We got into the car and went home. Mom greeted us there, we had dinner together, and went to our separate rooms. Satisfied? Dad dragged me out of the school building while I was scratching and biting. The teachers didn't interfere. That scene was ordinary for them. Who knows what the little brat has done. Then he pushed me into the car and we drove home in complete silence. Mom greeted us there. We had dinner together and we went to our separate rooms. Please, let's not discuss this further. No, you'll tell me again. Dad bought milk on our way home. Again. I hate milk so much. Same. Mom was not home. Again. I hate mom so much. What happened next? Suddenly, I feel someone's eyes on my back. 
Knowing that these moments should never, ever be ignored, I turn around. But there's nothing there. What happened next? Everything that happened next happened after something that led to everything that happened after what had happened. <laughs> That's how I would answer. I look at my bag again. Light pouring into the room through the window glints on the metal parts. And there's also a shadow underneath it, which means it's real, sadly. Whatever. I don't care anyway. I almost end up kicking the bag in a fit of sudden anger, but I manage to stop myself in the nick of time. If I move it even an inch, the whole picture will collapse and I'll go blind, as has already happened countless times. What do you mean, you'll go blind? I spent months memorizing the location of every item in my room. That's why I can see them so clearly and vividly. You won't get it. Look at your feet. I look down and see that a small insect is crawling toward me from my bag. It's barely glowing, and it can't even fly. I guess this firefly is really tired. I bend down to pick it up. The firefly starts glowing brightly as soon as I touch it, and the fly- the blah 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 blah. And then flies up. There you go, boy. Good job. After doing a victory lap around the room, it flies towards me with high speed. I shut my eyes, anticipating the firefly to enter my ear. That's exactly what happens. After it gets inside, it buzzes for a little while and then goes silent. This one is kind of sad. I wonder why. It doesn't matter. What matters is that it's no longer alone. Sure. Let's continue searching. What? No. Hey. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen, yet it still startled me. Your usual notebook pages, glued to the wall with duct tape. Numbers are drawn on them. It's the only kind of information I could take in without trouble. Dosage and side effects? Yeah. I thought you knew them by heart. Yeah. This is not your handwriting, isn't it? Of course it's not. Shaky, broken lines, ugly numbers. It's not writing, it's more like claw marks. Don't forget to thank your mom. I don't need your advice. My scream makes the pages rustle restlessly. After a moment, a firefly appears from underneath one of them. After looking around in a bu blah 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 blah. After looking around in a business-like manner, it takes off into a business-like flight and ends up entering my business-like ear. Hey. Let's continue searching. I turn my eyes towards an inconspicuous shelf near the mirror. There's a glass with a toothbrush sitting on it, and a small towel is hanging nearby. What a wonderful sight. My fireflies are smart and good. They would never get in there. They know about personal hygiene. Okay, let's look somewhere else. I can. I tilt my head backwards and almost fall over. The closet is hanging under the ceiling at least 300 feet off the floor. I think that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but that's okay. Are you joking? Even though it's my room, not everything here is for me to use. Whatever. I don't care. Yeah, I don't care at all. Like, totally, and I'm definitely not worried. Not even the littlest bit. Not even a smidgen of the littlest bit. Not even for a thousandth of a percent. That's how much I don't care. Convincing. Hey, I'm not even done telling you how much I don't care. And that's how you let someone know you don't care even the littlest bit. Just keep talking about how much you don't care. From this moment on, I'm ignoring you. Oh no, you don't. Then act normal.
I look at the mound of pills and it makes me feel dizzy. I don't want to think about it. I don't. What's wrong? I've almost skipped my dose for today. How reckless. I could have died. Uh, that's... I don't like that option. That option's really mean. Hey, calm down. You already fixed that. Yes, because you ordered me to. Things could have been much worse. Yeah. I gave a deep sigh. Come closer and extend my hand. Wow, it's warm. The moment those words leave my lips, one of the bottles overturns. Pills rain down from it, and along with them... A firefly! Hooray! After circling above my head a couple of times, it finally lands on my palm. The firefly rushes up my arm, and upon reaching my shoulder, calls straight up into my ear. My mind becomes a bit clearer. I get close to the waste bin and look inside it with curiosity. Pill packaging, notebook pages, and other garbage. Boring. There's nothing here. Indeed, no self-respecting firefly would hide in a heap of garbage. Can't disagree with you here. Still had to check. Is it just me or does the door like seem kind of open? Maybe that's like a little side window on the next to the door? I don't know. Okay, it seems like I've clicked everything except for the thing that makes noise whenever I hover over it, which is why I have not clicked it yet. Okay, uh... It's a trap. I mean, it seems like I can't actually click on it, so... I guess it is. I guess we're done searching. You found all the fireflies. Amazing. Ah, okay. I guess... I've managed to gather my thoughts, but something still worries me. On the other hand, I wasn't supposed to be happy anyway. Why not? If I lose something and then find it, it's just gonna... Blah 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 blah. It's just going back to the starting point. No changes at all. A zero sum. And happiness is always about being positive, right? You shouldn't think too much, it hurts you. I wanna sleep. How about you get some fresh air before sleeping? What do you mean? Well, go to the balcony. Breathe in some air. Somehow, those words triggered a panic in me. I subconsciously step away from the balcony. I don't think it's a good idea. Why? This may sound silly, but... I feel like someone's watching me. Okay, that is really fucking rude. <laughs> There's no way somebody cares about you that much. Gosh, so self-centered. Alright, let's stay here. Yeah. What are you going to do? What's with this silly question? I'm going to sleep, of course. Hoping that tomorrow will only come after a year, or a decade. Okay. First of all, Moon. Imagining myself to be outside of my mortal shell, but at the same time still being me. Ridiculous. Like milk outside of a bag of milk. <laughs> and yet. <laughs> and yet. You don't have to talk out loud for me to understand that you're worried about me. I know that already. I also know that our time is running short. You won't take another pill. Of course not. In fact, I won't take it tomorrow either. And the day after tomorrow. And never ever. That's a goodbye then? No. I have one more small favor to ask. A really, really small one. What is it? I blurted out way too much today. A lot of stuff I'd want to forget forever. I don't blame you, but was it really necessary? You'll see tomorrow. 
No, I wouldn't be able to sleep like this. Fine. What's the favor? I, um... I nervously scratch my wrists and bite on my lower lip. Wait a minute. You're afraid to tell me? Yes! I'm also scared that something bad might happen if I tell you. I'm also scared that when something bad happens, something way worse will happen. Stop. I get it already. Still, I won't leave you alone until you tell me. Bully. No, you. I crawl into my sleeping bag. The lower part of the room is very cold. I hurry to wrap myself in blankets, even though the electric heater is working hard to keep me warm. I'm sad because the dreams just won't come anymore. You won't believe me if I tell you how I dealt with it at first. Of course I'll believe you. I know. It was a joke. Well, anyway. I washed my face, brushed my teeth, lied down and start imagining that I'm watching a dream. I didn't sleep at all, of course, and always looked sleepy in the morning. After a week of insomnia, I started feeling weird about seeing things. Started feeling weird and seeing things. That is a very different sentence than what I came up with. Letters floating in the air, strange silhouettes that appeared in the most unexpected of places, bulging eyes with trembling pale pupils. It was scary, you know. Then one day, I almost died. I just collapsed in the middle of the room and couldn't move for a while. And then silhouettes, letters, and eyes were hanging over me and hissing. It was horrible. And well-deserved, I guess. It felt like I was uh, caught on the biggest lie in the world. Yes, it felt exactly like that. After that, I stopped. But the silhouettes, letters, and eyes stayed here. I guess they like this place. They always follow in my wake, peeping at me, and I'm kind of scared of them. I can't even argue with them. But today... Today... Well... I... Still too scared to tell me? Of course! They're still listening, you know? Use your hands. Alright. I start chaotically twirling my fingers with enthusiasm, forming blah 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 blah, forming complex shapes. You want me to tell you a bedtime story? Shh. And I was trying so hard here. Don't you get it? They'll hear you. Relax. Nobody can hear you. So what do you say? I'd be happy to, but I have no idea how to tell them. Oh, it's incredibly easy. Just talk about something without stopping. I- yeah, I get- mm, I guess that's how that works, huh? Sounds silly. But it's not. And meaningless. You don't know what you're talking about. I knew you're enough- blah 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 blah. I can read so well, Jesus. I know enough to realize that we'll just end up wasting time. Let's focus on something actually important. Boring. Fine. Close your eyes. I wake up on a wooden bench. In front of me lies a narrow, dimly lit alley. An awfully familiar road. Where could have I seen it? Finally. I hear a voice coming from the side. I turn around and see a boy with a weird expression on his face. You're late. Um, who are you? The boy blinks in bewilderment. 
We're not going anywhere like this. Try again. Then he takes a very deep breath. You are late. I stare at him, confused. He stares back, also confused. S sorry The boy nods, satisfied. See? Much better. Do you have a name? My name's Tresca? Tresca. Uh... I give the brat an evaluating look. He's so young, yet already coming at me with questions like that. Oh no, anything but asking your name. None of your business. And besides, will anyone tell me what I'm doing here? Hey, that's rude. It's not like there's somebody else here besides me. Yeah, totally not. Not, not a stream of four chatters and person streaming. No, 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 not at all. Nope. And however many views this ends up getting on YouTube. Mm, nope, no, no one else. <laughs> Haven't they told you anything? I know all there is to know, for one. About what? You're obligated to escort me to the store. To buy milk? Tresca says that and strikes a victory pose. No way I'm doing that. You do understand that refusal is futile. Well, aren't you full of yourself? I'm serious. I'm not the one who decided that. Do you think I'm delighted with your company? He is weird. Constantly shifting between happiness, sadness, loudness, silence. He's a wacko, and his name is stupid. Are we going or what? You can go, and I need to think. I'd be happy to, but I don't know the way. Tresca puts on a cunning smile. I bite my lower lip in frustration. I'll be honest with you. I don't like you. He simply bursts out laughing in reply. I do like you, though. Then he grabs my hand without hesitation. I don't even have time to retort. Lead the way. Our trip to the store went fine, if not for the fact that Tresco was walking way faster than me. And, on the other hand, at times he stopped abruptly and went backwards, studying the ground underneath his feet. In the end, the trip took a lot longer than it should. After reaching the store's doors, we were greeted by a sign. We are closing in 20 minutes. You had the bright idea to indicate their working hours in this way. I'm surprised you guys bothered to read the sign, because no one reads signs. They probably have special staff for this. Someone who runs to change the sign every five minutes. It's convenient. Are you joking? Yeah. You're so annoying. It's much better than being boring. How old are you, by the way? None of your business. Ah, and what's your name? None of your business. I was ready to slap the living hell out of the brat, but a scary looking man suddenly appeared behind the glass. He's holding a cardboard sign that says, We're closing in 15 minutes. Let's go. What are you waiting for? Huh? Oh, yeah. After another round of going across the long row of canned products, we realize that we're lost. I can't believe you don't know where they sell milk. I, um... Maybe we should ask somebody for directions? Sure. Hey, wait up. Tresca lets go of my hand and walks confidently toward one of the few store's customers. That person is standing with her back to us, studying something on the shelf. Hello, can I... I can't hear neither the second part of his question, nor the reply he gets. But my good-for-nothing friend freezes in place, looking the customer straight in the eye. I hurry them along. Is he yours? The customer talks to me. He speaks with a disgust while wearing a scornful expression. I, um... If he's yours, please get him away from me. I yes, I'm sorry. 
I grab Tresca's hand and lead him away. And still looking at the customer, his mouth ajar and eyes popped, is also shaking. Uh, only when we turn around the corner, Tresca calms down. What was that? I, I got so scared, he said. What? No, not again! Suddenly, Tresca starts screaming like crazy. I cover his mouth with my hand. His face is burning. He's crying. Can you act normal? You don't understand. Of course I don't. I don't understand anything. Okay, mood. Annoying other people is still wrong, though. This is something you don't understand, it seems. You're mean. <laughs> Who? Me? Tresca pushes me away and runs off. Drat. At the edge of my vision, I see the store staff hanging a new sign on the door. There you are! I meet Tresca at the cash register. Before that, I managed to visit the milk department after finding out where it was. Hey, you! Move! I hear an angry voice coming from the other side of a long queue that has formed after Tresca. I squeeze through toward him. What happened? The boy doesn't respond. He just looks at his feet and sniffs. The cashier towers over him. There's a bag of milk lying between them. Is he yours? Yes. Just leave him home next time. People in the queue nod in agreement. Pay for the goods, please. Yes, of course. And the waiting fee. Uh, what? You heard me. I did, but that's unheard of. Tresca starts giggling all of a sudden. And for the fact that your son is a retard too. Oh, oof. But, but, you heard me. You know what? In a fit of rage, I throw a banknote to the cashier of a much higher value than needed, even counting in all the stupid fees. And I grab a bag of milk and turn around on my heels. We're leaving, Tresca. Demonetized. Oh, God. Not that I can monetize my videos yet anyway, <laughs> but... <laughs> we spend the whole trip back in silence. At some point, we ended up turning right towards a gas station. There, Tresca finally breaks his silence. Do you like ice cream? No. Okay. I look at the boy's face. A light flickers in his eyes for a brief moment and then goes out. You know... He turns away from the path and walks straight towards the highway with determination. I stare at his back, confused. Uh... It seems like you're not helping me at all. A new playful light flickers in Tresca's eyes. Like, I was just gonna end on that note. Heh. <laughs> it's just gonna leave. <laughs> well, that's quite fucking rude. <laughs> that was indeed a fucking ride. I'll never look at milk the same way ever again. Was that the good ending or the bad ending? That's a great fucking question. That is a really good question, and I honestly have not even the slightest clue. I guess we might have a chance of knowing after these creepy sounding credits. Uh. Uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, mm. This will be fun to edit. <laughs> oh god. Um. 
So how are you guys faring after that adventure? <laughs> Do you guys want some milk now? Oh, we're not gonna find out if that was a good or bad ending. <laughs> I was talking to my inner demons and they're confused too. <laughs> uh, so valid, so valid. Um, that was a very, very fun stream. That's definitely the best word to describe this game. Um, <laughs> I don't even know how to end stream. There are five endings. This is the default ending. Ooh. Maybe we can play this game again on a different Sunday to try to get one of the other endings. But that is definitely, definitely for another time. Um, so good at the words. I'm so good at ending streams. I'll just end it now. Bye bye.